for the last two months, you've done games associated with the Saturday Supercade, or at least it's come out that way. Starting off, we did Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. And then we moved on to the next month, Frogger, Cubert, and Pitfall 2, Lost Caverns, all for arcade. I did not include Kangaroo because I did that a while back. I did not include Space Ace because I want to save that for a later time, for a later category. But we did not get the video friends together, if you know what I mean. And this month, we're going to do just that. We're going to get all the Saturday Supercade stars, except for Space Ace, in the same room through the magic of Atari. Starting off, Frogger. Frogger for Atari. I remember playing this game as a kid. Starting out, you still have the old Frogger music. Dun 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 And all that jazz. And of course the other theme music. Ooh, already got so far soon. I remember playing this as a kid. This was one of my earlier games. And also you gotta be careful. Sometimes you may jump a little too far. You just nudge it forward. Gotta keep tabs on which turtles are rising. And, and also you gotta be precise with your moving forward. Otherwise you drown. And there's no skull and crossbones here, but... And there's the girl. Okay, yep, hot for a date. Always get the girl frog, or try to. And yeah, I made it. Still the same game, still the same premise. And yep, still gotta watch what you're doing. Still gotta meet the time. You still get the same surprises, the crocodiles, the alligators in the uh, lily pad can show up on occasion. Sometimes you'll even see a snake on a log or a snake crossing the road. Unlike the arcade game, you do have the opportunity of going to the other side. It's like if you can't go through the barrier of the game, you can't appear on the other end thanks to the difficulty switches. But for me, this is still very much a fun play. I just have to watch <laughs> where I jump is all. Well, two in, not bad, not bad at all. Yep, there's the snake going across. You see him later. One more time. See if we can get a little more. And here we go. Yeah, you gotta wait for the music to stop before you can move in. Uh, already gotten, he was moving slow too. But it goes faster and becomes a lot more difficult as time goes on, so no worries there. I think this, uh, I think Parker Brothers Atari is pretty dang close to the original. At least it feels that way. You just don't have the constant music uh, going on, but you still have the music at the end and at the beginning. Signaling the start and the end. And of course, the girl frog. Come on. Oh. Yep. Here we go again. Am I gonna make it? Made it! Ooh, did I make that? Okay, come on. Moving up forward. Moving on over. Yadding on over. Jumping up. Yep. Killed myself and killed my date. Yikes. Okay. Jumping up. And, yep, overbalance there. You can find yourself doing that if you're not careful with the with the controls. Okay. And the timer bar off to the right, indicating how long you got to get to the top of the lily pads. Almost there. Made it. And did not make that. Dang. 
Frogger was one of the earlier games I had as a kid. It still is fun to play even to this day. They got it as close to the arcade as I felt it could have gone. You still have a uh, quite a bit of the music. It's not continuously playing. You have to get used to playing in the silence. But if you do that, you can still have as much fun with Atari's uh, Frogger, which was brought out by Parker Brothers, and the arcade version, and maybe even other versions as well. Next up, Donkey Kong! <laughs> Donkey Kong! And it does not look all that impressive. I, I get why this has the reputation it does. Well, Mario still looks, uh, well, like Mario. It does look like he's put on a few pounds, though. And, uh, well, it still jumps, but, ugh, hit detection. Didn't I clear that? And, I guess some people probably do think they get Pac-Man vibes from this, and I can see why. Ooh, yep. Still get a few surprises here and there. So, the uh, ladders are, well, you can, you can climb those. Ugh, that's a surprise. So, one more try. Yep. And Donkey Kong, well... well some have said he looked more like a gingerbread man. I guess I can see why. Oh, looks like I made that, okay. But did not make that. There's basically just the two levels here. At least as far as I've heard. I've made it to the second level of picking up the pigs, uh, I believe once, but never got further than that. I guess you try to put as much of the game as you can into this cartridge, and yeah, it's playable, and you can enjoy it. You can get the Donkey Kong feel out of it, but, yep, and yeah, the barrels just disappear. And you also gotta be careful where you hit. It's fine, I guess. Donkey Kong by Coleco, it gets a bad rep, and you can understand why. But the game is playable, and it still has its challenges to it. So you can play it, if you have to, and if you enjoy it, and you can enjoy it, but it can also be frustrating at times. And some people consider it uh, poor quality. It's what worked for the Atari at the time. Remember, Atari's Pac-Man. Although, as time went on, homebrews and hacks did seem to fix a lot of the problems we had with the games we played growing up. Like with the uh, Donkey Kong Reloaded. Reloaded. Donkey Kong! <laughs> well, Mario looks a little better. He looks a little more slimmed down and his overalls are more in tune to the color. Barrels are still pretty much the same. It still looks... It looks a little more cleaner. I wind up saying the difficulty to hard, I guess. Nope, switch it back. Sorry. A little fiddling with the controls for a sec. The walls seem... Ooh. Yeah, but even the slightest hit detection can still get you. It feels better, at least for me it does. And like the uh, first game, you only have one hammer. And yeah, there's a headache. And basically you have to push the button to start. There's no reset, you just uh, press and get moving. But yeah, the gameplay is like Donkey Kong. And uh, yeah, though, it's not as, not like the arcade. 
I mean, some say this was a poor man's version. Yeah. But this is a little more hacked, a little more cleaner. It's still very much like the Coleco game. It's just better dressing. But yeah, you can play it and you can enjoy it. Oh, careful with that barrel. Yep, made that one. Made that one. Come on. Up and made it to the top. Of course, Donkey Kong does not take the girl away. And he just made it. And yeah, ducks in a row. Let's see if I can get this one down. It's picking off the pegs. You pick out the pegs. You also lock in the ducks. Give yourself a little bit of a safe haven, safe berth. Jump to the other side. Watch yourself. There goes the peg. And there goes the peg again. And you also just gotta make sure they don't hit you. And once you pull the pegs, then, well, they can't jump over the pegs either, so they're stuck in their little slots. So, I guess here you're just timing it a little well. Okay, here goes a peg. Yep, caught in a spot. Jump. Yep, made it. Here goes a peg. Jump. One more. Watch yourself. One more. Yep, you made it. And it's back to the original maze. This one felt a little more playable than the first. Whoever did the work on this uh, did a pretty good job. And barrels seem a little easier to climb. Well, easier to jump over, but you still have to be careful about the hit detection. Yep, jump, and of course the hammer. Jump. Gameplay is the same. Graphics a little better. Donkey Kong still looks like a gingerbread man. And what is he doing? I, think, I guess he's trying to pound his chest, but... It's not... I don't know if it's coming out like he's pounding his chest or not. It might just be... Strumming an air guitar twice or something. Or something. And let's try the other side, I guess. Yeah, the hammer's in the center. I guess you never really go for that. Well, knock that one out. Wherever the duck is on whatever side of the peg, that's where you trap the uh, duck at. I mean, if you pull the pin and the duck is on the other side of the scaffolding, then that duck will be trapped over there. Climbing up. Again, usual stuff. I found myself playing this a good bit. This one was more fun, I guess, than the original one was. But yeah, you can also get bored playing this uh, after a while. You can enjoy it, but you can get bored by it. Yep, you see? Duck's trapped on the other end. And jump over. So nice to be able to put on that little show. And it got me on the way out. Well, a little something different there. And miss that. You know, once you know the formula of this, it gets pretty... Boring after a while, I guess. And yeah, you also gotta be careful not to step on the pigs or you fall down. Donkey Kong Reloaded seemed like a more fun and easier game to play. I was able to get through it a little better, but the play was still the same. And Mario, as I mentioned before, uh, he seemed a little more color coordinated. And not as portly. 
But I'm going to do a little deviation from the Supercade uh, for once because, and oh, don't worry, I'll be getting back to that because there's a little bit of a controversy around Donkey Kong that it ripped off King Kong. At least that's what the Universal Studios lawsuit to Nintendo emphasized. If you know your lawsuit history, the suit was thrown out because it was stated that Universal was suing for rights that they did not own. But that did not stop from a King Kong video game being made for the 2600. I'm not sure what the uh, banner was for that. Maybe it was a 20th Century Fox game as they always liked making use of movie properties. So, we're going to compare Donkey Kong the video game to King Kong the video game. King Kong the game. Okay, let's see how similar this is to the movie. Or the previous game. That, I guess, is King Kong. Uh, World Trade Center, Empire State Building, I can't say for sure. Up top, uh, it's either Fay Ray or Jessica Lange. Down below, it's Bruce Cabot or Jeff Bridges. And Charles Schultz, uh, Snoopy always did like making fun, uh, participating in King Kong. I don't know what that is, but that was a jump and... Are those birthday candles? And I think you just got trashed by one. Lives indicator below. You got two, uh, Jeffs or Bruce's. And I guess he is sending down cupcakes. And there are gaps you have to jump over. Yep, jump over that. Jump over the cupcake. Jump over the cupcake. And it seems like I guess the cupcakes can go down the gap. So there's a little difference there. And I guess you jump up a floor. And King Kong can jump down to maybe where you are, so he never stays up top. Fay Ray or Jessica Lang uh, is able to stay up top, though. So, slight difference there. Let's see if we can get one more. Climbing the, climbing the stairs, climbing the ladders, and watch out for those. Uh, Oh well, yeah, the cupcakes. I did not know King Kong liked cupcakes. Well, they, they look like cupcakes to me. <laughs> and watch out for the cupcake. And, ooh, nope, got me. And there I am, uh, crumpled heap, and that's it. And for those saying that, uh, Donkey Kong ripped off the movie King Kong. Well, I guess at the end of the day, they could probably say a little bit about the game King Kong ripping off Donkey Kong. Similar premise. You had an ape at the top of a building. Uh, scaffolding? I No. Donkey Kong was scaffolding. King Kong was a building. World Trade Center, Empire State Building. Go with your preference. But there were also a lot of differences in this game. For one thing, King Kong could come down and come after you. And there were also some gaps you had to jump over. A little like uh, when you remove the pegs off the second level scaffolding of Donkey Kong to send Donkey Kong to his uh, end so you could run away with Pauline. Between King Kong the game and Donkey Kong the game, there's definitely some similarities. But there's also quite a few differences too. But now, getting back to the Supercade, Qbert. Qbert.
The joystick can still throw you, but not for the reasons you expect. You expect things to be a little different on this game, but actually, I think when you move the joystick a little, it still comes off the same. You get in the right spot, the right point, you can still get it coily. Coily's still a purple ball that becomes a coily snake. But it's more up, down, left, right than diagonal, up, diagonal, down, diagonal, left, diagonal, right. You still got to get to the squares right. You can still get thrown from time to time. You still have the... Ooh, yeah. And he's not doing the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It gives crash sounds for... His aggravations. And yeah, I still get a bad start. I guess that's a constant, even with the arcade game. You may not get the best start that you can possibly get. But Koi still can jump off as soon as you jump on a platform, provided you hit it just, ugh, and Koi can still get you. Okay, going. Almost got it. Down. Ooh, still got me. And made it. I think that was more important. You're still, levels are still the same. You're still changing colors. It's a nice, fun little diversion. But you still got to be careful. Yeah, and I just jumped up. I just, yeah, it's too soon. Once you figure out the controls, I'm in for a lot of fun, and I jumped on Coily. Yikes. Arcade Cubert played a little differently as the joystick always went different directions to accommodate for the diagonal play when Cubert was hopping on the squares. In Atari's Cubert, it just seems like you were just going with the uh, average direction of the joystick, but it still can throw you. You can go off the uh, you can go off the deep end of the Q mazes in the Atari, much like you can in the arcade. So, no matter which direction you're using your joystick, you'll run into that same issue. Gameplay is still pretty much the same, but the colorful curses of Cubert are a little different. Next up, the home video version of the first video I ever did. The first video I ever did was a Mother's Day tribute. Here, it's under a different banner. Kangaroo for Atari. Kangaroo! Always wanted to revisit the home version of this game. Uh, the first video I did starting off this show was a Mother's Day tribute, and the game I reviewed was Kangaroo, so this would be a revisiting for the home consoles. For the most part, it's still plays pretty much the same, at least with the opening level. Climb the la climb the ladders, get your uh, baby Roo back. Here you're jumping over the platforms and climbing, getting the strawberries for the rewards, punching out and being careful of those mean monkeys that will throw their crab apples at you. Ring the bell to cause a nice little snooze. Help you along. You're hopping along, and you also gotta time your jumps well. Again, not all the levels are on in the home version. I guess I got one, but still got punched down. So let's try another round of this. Kangaroo's still hopping. Still jump. Okay, and yep. 
Oh, nice little punch. I think uh, the arcade game was a little more graphic. Well, I think I just got got by a crab apple. I think the top monkey is not seen, but still drops his surprises down. Punch the, uh, yep. Still dropping crab apples from up top, but you never see him. Yep. I guess he's off, I guess he's off camera still. Punch, watch it. Eh, made it before the apple could hit. And also, uh, the little Joey is not exactly happy to s Well, actually, I think he is happy to see. He's just not calling out for mom. Like the arcade game did. But yeah, Joey's uh, up top waiting to be rescued. You're the mom rescuing the kid. And beating back the bad monkeys. And... Yep. So you gotta jump through the crevices, over the platforms, and it's gotta time it right. Kangaroo! Plays still the same. Lacks uh, the arcade quality. But, gameplay is similar. The, uh, one of the monkeys uh, does not make an appearance as he's in hiding when he sends down his apples, but the others do make their appearance. And you do make it to the top to save your little Joey. But uh, apparently, as far as I've been able to tell, there have been two levels to this home version. As far as I got, the arcade had a lot more. But it's still a fun playing and still has its challenges to it. It is definitely one I could sit down and enjoy playing again. Next up, Donkey Kong Jr. Atari's Monkey Muscle. Does not look like much. I think this could be very much like the Atari version of Donkey Kong. I mean, you play as best you can with it. And Junior, I'm not sure he looks so... I think that's as close to a monkey as they could get for the Atari. Uh, those metallic crab things. And yeah, you gotta watch out. And you can still take falls. And those crab things, well, they're smaller than you'd expect. But they still have their bite. Okay. Still sliding up, sliding down vines. You still got to avoid those things. And still got to climb the vines to get across to save your papa. Who still looks like a gingerbread man. And you also got to watch the water below. Mario still looks uh, the same as he did in his ColecoVision. Although he looks a little more redder. He still looks like he needs to lose a couple pounds. And yeah, you fell into the drink again. One more go. Let's see what we can get. And going up. Keep your eye on the uh, chompers. And also watch your landing. Well, maybe when he's stationary, he kind of looks a little like uh, an ape or close. Still slide down. Junior looks like he's a little more skinnier when he is going up two vines. Up, oh, yeah. And you gotta slide down fast, but don't lose your grip. Let's see if we can make it again. But basic premise, you're climbing the vines, trying to get to the other side, and don't let the chompers get you. Or you're done. Again, the arcade game is probably a better play. But you can still enjoy this one too. 
As long as you get the appearance of the play, I guess it's all right. Still trying to climb to get to the key to free your papa. Then you get to the next level. And yeah, I still want to go for him. See if I can get one more round out of this. And, ooh, chomper right there. You still got to keep tabs on those uh, chomper creatures. Things still surprise you. See if we can do one last time. Going down. And where do we go from here? Looks like we got that. Nope. Chomper coming down. I guess there's a little bit of a pattern to the chompers coming. Just a matter of keeping tabs on it. Okay. Yep, watch out for that chomper. Come down. Ooh, made it. Double. Yeah, you go faster going double, but watch out for that chomper. Made it. Jumped over. Come on, come on, come on. You almost got in. You got him. But... Yeah, Mario does not carry off the uh, carry off the ape. And before I get started with that, I get got by a low flying goose. I basically would have to start all over again with that. Should I do it? Yeah, I do it. And watch yourself. Ooh, I just slid down there. And the chomper fell into the drink. Up. Ooh. As I try to get over, but I was not in time. Come on. One more. Let's see what we can do. I guess there are patterns to this that are worth figuring out. Especially in regards to where the chompers come and where they go. So you can get around them. Maybe in the Atari, they're easier to figure out. Not sure you could in the uh, arcade version. So this might be a little more simpler to play. And take things slight. Made it. Made it to the top. Yes. Going again. And made it to the vine, which you do not climb to grab the key for, but oh yeah. Made it to the other level. Still one left. And this one you're trying to get three up. And it seems like there's a lot of ground-based enemies down there that you gotta watch out for. And the chompers uh, go to the ground to get you here. So there is definitely a challenge moment here. And you still got to watch that bird. It still has the same graphics issues that Donkey Kong did. Donkey Kong still looks like a gingerbread man. Does Junior even look like um, a little ape or a little monkey or whatever you're looking for? Sometimes he seems to, and other times he kind of looks like Hangman from the Hangman spelling game. The metal chompers Mario sends your way. There's a pattern. Once you figure that out, you can figure the game out. But then when you get to the second level, you got a whole different set of uh, patterns and challenges to face, and... The ground may not be as safe as it once was. So, definitely, uh, you can have some fun with playing it, but I understand if you're not in a rush to, and the arcade version's more your speed. And now, one more. The real star of this video, because... Not to knock the other arcade games, but this character on the Supercade, 
started out as a home version. It was the home version that made his name. Yes, I showed an arcade version of a sequel game, but not the original game of which he was based off of. Here, I will be showing that game. Pitfall. David Crane's Masterpiece. Pitfall by Activision. Pitfall Harry, the hero of the Supercade. Well, actually, the Supercade had many heroes, but this was very much the archaeological thrill. Well, the adventurer thrill, not... Pitfall was looking to be an archaeologist, but he was also a treasure hunter. Jumping over logs, jumping over scorpions, the vines. Classic. Classic. Pitfall. Jumping, swinging. Watch the gators and time that right. Or bah, da, 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 your gator lunch. They're open. Time it, time it, time it. And yeah, watch the logs again. If you're lucky enough to get a rope swing with the gators on it, uh, you take full advantage. You also have the under caverns that you have to look out for. Ooh, yep, a uh, stationary cobra you gotta watch out for. Jump over that. Treasure, which gets you a little more. I guess the clock is you have to find a certain amount of treasures within that certain amount of time. But you also gotta keep tabs of all the traps around you. Only you know, uh, open water and opening tar pits. You wonder why the vine's there? Well, I guess you got as you know now. But uh, if you're without one, you still gotta keep an eye open for it too. Yeah, you just stepped off there. Timing has to be pretty precise. And you got three lives here. Let's try the other way. I want to see what happens. Yep, scorpion. And I did not clear him. This is a nice, little, fun little romp through. It's relaxing. It's uh, searching. And you fell into the drink. And you went to the other side. Well, that's one way to get across, I guess. <laughs> But it's not one that I'd say any gamer would recommend. And not if you want to continue playing. Swing across. Watch the holes. And a lot of those caverns, uh, well, they end with dead ends. Yeah, and the logs are right behind you if you go the other way too. So careful they don't knock you down. Sometimes it helps to keep pace with them. Last life, jump, try to find the treasure, or a treasure, see if we can go the other way, and nope, crock me. Making this third Supercade video, I felt I had to do Pitfall justice. Pitfall was a home release. So I had to cover the other home releases too. So to cover Pitfall meant to cover home releases. And for Pitfall, it's definitely an adventure and it's definitely a challenge. You got to find the treasures. You got to do it in a certain amount of time. Got to get a little energy. Otherwise... Well, game over, I guess. This was considered uh, David Crane's masterpiece when he was founder at Activision. Still holds up to this day. Pop it in, have some fun, run with it. Feel like I'm missing out a game and want to nominate one of your own? Check me out on social media or leave a comment below. 
See you all next time, and... Don't forget to click and subscribe.